Hi, I'm Mike. I'm Frank, and what are you teaching me today? We're going to teach you how to install Messi and Poloni coax connectors on Messi and Poloni coax. And these connectors, when we put these together, they're, they're no crimp, they're no solder braids. All we have to do is solder the center uh, conductor, and then they all just kind of screw together uh -huh. on the back. It sounds so easy. I might be able to do it. It is, it is easy enough for, for Frank to do. I believe in you. So Let's do it. Let's make it happen. A quick shout out to all my Patreons who make the show possible. You can support me by joining Patreon in the link below. And on to Tank Radio! Messi and Poloni coax connectors on Messi and Poloni coax. And we have a few different varieties. We've got, we've got the Extraflex Berry 10. We've got the Hyperflex 10. We've got Ultraflex 7 Sahara. This is the new stuff for, for high heat. And we have some uh, Hyperflex 5 that we're going to be making a bunch of jumper cables out of this one. So basically we just need to put cables on uh, the ends of these three and we're going to hack this one up and make a bunch of jumpers for our triplexer. So just out of kind of curiosity, what would be the use cases for some of the different ones of these? So they're all, yeah, so the... So the uh, these are basically the same coax, mm -hmm. the, the Extra Flex Berry and the Hyperflex 10. Um, they're about the size of RG213, LMR400, uh, but they have a higher velocity factor. They've got a lot better shielding, so that's going to hopefully eliminate uh, some of the noise that your shield would pick up. Just incredibly high quality cables. This Ultraflex 7, you said that was slightly the thicker than RG8X, uh -huh. but it actually has better specifications than RG213. Incredibly awesome coaxial cables from Messi and Poloni. And then this Hyperflex 5, I've been using this for about a month or so out in the field. A um, little bit thinner than RG8X. And again, the shielding on this, the velocity factor, everything's just, it's just higher quality. So the cool thing about this design, because we're just soldering that center pin the way we are, yeah. you can actually take these off and reuse them. The, the um, jackets? The whole thing. The whole thing? You can reuse this whole thing. If you desolder You just desolder this, you just unscrew it, yeah. desolder the center pin, and you can put it on, you know, you can oh, make a repair, you can put on a different coax or whatever. Oh, that's so. beautiful. Yeah. So you don't have to go and get out more crimpers or, or more... Um, right. You don't need to waste them. Yeah. Now, these are sized for the coax, so there's different sizes of, course. of these. But, I mean, they're all the same. They just have a wider or thinner mm -hmm. um, hole in the end. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So I just took off the uh, the Ultra, the uh, Hyperflex 10 Sahara this morning mm -hmm. because I forgot to put this on. Mm -hmm. So I just took it off this morning, put that back on, put it together. We're done. And we're back on the air. All right. So as far as tools, we're going to need... You don't have to have these, but these are really awesome. These are the Messi and Poloni coax scissors, and these are what we're going to use to cut our coax. And then we need some kind of wrenches because the, the connector actually screws together. Mm -hmm. Kind of a, a nice, unique design. And we're going to need a soldering iron. And with this big, heavy coax, I like to put it in a vise when I'm soldering. It just makes it a little easier because it is it is flexible, but it's still kind of stiff at the same time. So on the directions here, so let's open up our connectors. So these are the Messi and Poloni Evo connectors. And you'll notice just the tip here, like there's no place to solder. What happens is we unscrew this. We're actually going to not use this ring. We're going to use this heat suppressor, which is totally unnecessary for 100 watt radio, but we're going to use it anyway. But these are cool because if you, you know, if you're running high power with amplifiers and things and digital modes, your coax can heat up, so this helps dissipate that. And what happens is this replaces the bottom cap and this screws in here like this. So now you've got this big, ginormous, awesome connector. That's like a huge heat sink. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. So it's, it's aluminum and there's gaskets and washers and everything in here to keep it all nice and watertight. So we kind of need to disassemble all this stuff and we get a, bit, we get a bunch of parts. And these are, the instructions are on the back. But if we look at the center conductor, 
it, it's kind of like soldering if you've ever soldered a BNC connector. Mm -hmm. the, the coax goes in here, the center, and there's a little hole, and you just put a little solder in that hole. Nothing goes up here, it actually just stops right there. So very easy to install. And then we've got a few parts that we need to put on, so we're going to put this on first. So we're going to put that on. And then we put this washer and that little rubber gasket. Ooh. It's tight. It's a little tight, but we want it tight. There we go. Keep going. You're going to need a bit of room because we're going to cut some of that. You want to cut off about 10 millimeters, which I have no idea what that is in inches. But you don't cut off much at all. So we're not going to cut this, and that's actually a bit, yeah, right around there. So you want to gently cut the outer sheet, the, uh, the jacket off, mm -hmm. but don't cut through shield of the coax. So we'll just take it really slow. Or manhandle it. <laughs> now spread apart all the... Uh, the shielding on the outside? Shielding, yep. Now this is actually going to slide underneath the shield and the jacket. But we need to spread this apart a little bit so you can use the knife just to open it up so we can get it around the center. Other way. It goes on like that, yep. And then you kind of squeeze it closed and just force it. And you can actually, I found, if you use the little circle in this wrench, you can put it over and kind of cram it in there. That's yeah. a good trick. Yeah. That's a mic trick. I love that. That's, that's just beautiful. Just learned that this morning. Now we can take our scissors. We're gonna. We're basically gonna expose the center conductor now, but just go pretty much just go all the way down there. Exposed. Be careful. Those those scissors are sharp. They'll cut right through that center conductor. So that's probably too much, but this is gonna go on next. Nylon nut washer thing there. Then that. Actually, that looks pretty perfect. Did that bottom out? Yes, that did. Okay, sweet. Doesn't really matter how you do it. We can we can go ahead and solder that on, and then what happens is this little rubber washer slides up. Mm -hmm. We'll trim off all the extra shield, mm -hmm. and then we'll slide that over, tighten it down, and it's done. So it's done like that. No it. crimp. No crimp. Oh right. No soldering of the shield. So I like to put this in the vise. Now it's going to take a while to heat this up. What setting do you like your iron? 700? Hot. Yeah, I keep mine at 700. This is the Hako uh, FX888 Delta. Do you know how to solder? A bit. That's a no. <laughs> I, I, I've so, done several. tip maintenance is paramount. So every time we take the soldering iron out, yep. we're going to jam it in there. Jam it in there. Now, and do I you actually pin like it to, beforehand? I actually like to kind of clean it off a couple times. Notice how nice and shiny that yeah. tip is. By using good solder skills or solder practices, it'll always stay like that. So I just like to clean it off a little bit, and then you can put a little dab on, and that's going to help transfer heat mm -hmm. to the thing. Now when we're done, we're going to dab it, and then we're going to just drown it in solder to keep the tip protected, and then we put it back. That's what you should do every time you solder. So where are we going to try to heat this up? So at? you don't want to just apply the solder to the iron and then try and force it in. You really want to heat the metal and get everything hot enough so the solder just goes in that little hole. So you don't need much, so you're actually going to heat it. I heat it from the bottom, Yeah. and it takes a while. So you're just going to kind of sit there, and you might need a little more solder on the tip uh, if you need to transfer, but be careful because it kind of wants to move. Mm -hmm. So actually, if we have it maybe up a little bit more, but don't hold on to it because you'll burn yourself. You can touch this, though, and make sure you're just touching the metal. Is that there. what I'm doing wrong? All my uh, soldering videos, I'm going, ow, ow, <laughs> ow. And then just kind of hold this there until it, it melts. But it'll take a while. Ow. Yeah. Once it's hot enough, it'll just try and heat it a little more underneath that. This is the part I get impatient at. Keep let it flow and keep it keep it going. There we yeah, go. It's just sinking in. Yep, that should be good. That's enough. That's it. So we'll let that cool down. Clean the tip. Put more solder. Just flood it with solder. More. Just drown it in solder. There you go. Yep. And you can put it back. And that's it. So we'll let that cool for a second. 
Ow. <laughs> <laughs> You're like me, Mike. Yeah. Is it cold yet? Is it cold yet? No. <laughs> Ow. When I was a little kid, my mom's like, don't touch the stove, it's hot. What do I do? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Yeah. Like stupid stuff. And now all we have to do is screw together no. two things, and that's it. You can't be that simple. Well, we got to do it again because there's two sides. Oh, it of course that, that. Yeah, it is that simple. Okay. Is that cool enough? So now we can it's slide still this still warm, up. but... You have to take did. the scissors and snip all that yeah. off. Yeah, you We got it. Huh? We got it. You sure? Yeah. Okay. I'm just it doesn't take a um, hundred thousand viewers or subs to yeah. uh, do this. Let me tell you what: a hundred thousand subs does jack squat for my soldering skills, which really still suck. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I can teach you next if you'd like. Okay, yeah. Why don't you... I I hope we got that on uh, Mike. Okay. So we got a couple little stragglers there. Clean it up nice and tidy. Perfectionist. OCD, buddy. It follows you. Yeah, yeah. And make sure none are touching the center conductor, yeah, obviously, like but that would cause a short. A Shorts short. are bad. Yeah. Slide that up and grab, where's the connector here? Right here. And just slide that over. Just stick it in. A little, a little force. Come on now. Grip. There, you go. there it is. The washer was uh, in the way. Oh. Pliers and the wrench to... So you can see there's a little groove there for the wrench, and then down on the bottom of the heat sink is another one. You grip the bottom with the pliers. Really, if you have two wrenches, it's better, but I don't have any out here in the field. That's it? That's it. How, how tight? Hand tight or uh, just... So you feel it's tight enough. Dude! And that's it. Pretty easy, huh? Right down at end. Way, way easier than soldering... Let's do it again! ...any other connectors. So we cut it right here. That was so easy. I just wanted to put this video out to show you why I'm going to be buying Messy Poloni cables and connectors. I just loved how easy and those connectors go on. There's no crimping, just a little bit of soldering to the center pin, and it was just that simple. Um, that's it. That's all I have for you today. So thank you for joining. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You can support me on Patreon. There is a link in the description below. And to all my tankers out there, go forth and conquer.